Good evening, everyone. Got a really quick update for you. And yeah, this is sort of old news, but nevertheless, I think it's something that needs to be addressed anyway, at least briefly. We have yet another problem with Starliner. And although the previous issue that caused a delay in the launch could be attributed to ULA and the Atlas rocket and an issue in the Centaur upper stage, this time Starliner has another problem. And it's just a little helium leak, nothing all that significant, but a problem that was traced to the Starliner's service module and apparently a flange on a single reaction control system thruster. As you may recall, on the previous flight of this spacecraft, there were problems with the RCS thrusters, as a matter of fact, problems with just about all the thrusters on this spacecraft, and redundancy kicked in and not enough thrusters failed to present a serious problem, but nevertheless, it was a serious issue that had to be resolved before they could attempt another launch. And here we go again, another issue with another thruster. Granted, not a significant problem, but this is going to, in my opinion, give rise to other questions. If Starliner is really supposed to be used for other commercial projects, or supposed to be contracted for future private crews heading to orbit at that sort of thing, are they really going to tolerate these ongoing delays? I mean, we've had years and years, or rather Boeing has had years and years to get everything right with this spacecraft, and yet the delays keep piling up, and that could create a serious problem for any commercial crews that are on their way to the ISS or to a commercial space station in the future. And not only that, ULA is experiencing similar problems in this regard. Every time they have the smallest issue, the delays are significant, sometimes as long as several weeks. And if we are to believe that ULA is going to be able to increase their launch cadence with Vulcan Centaur to the point to where they're launching a rocket every two weeks, well, these sorts of problems are going to have to be rectified a lot more swiftly, and there doesn't seem to be any sign that that's going to be happening anytime soon. And by the way, the U.S. Space Force and the U.S. military has expressed serious concerns about this because ULA is very far behind in their contractual obligations to the U.S. Space Force, and given the fact that they have dozens of missions upcoming, the military is for the first time expressing doubt in public that ULA is actually going to be able to keep up with demand. And that is a very serious problem for ULA and their plans to become a legitimate competitor with SpaceX. It isn't just enough to have a good rocket. It isn't just enough to have a reliable rocket. You also have to have a very high launch cadence, at least a third as much as Falcon 9 is achieving recently, and that just doesn't seem to be remotely possible for ULA, at least not for the next several years. And if ULA really is going to compete with SpaceX, they're going to have to figure out a way to pick up the pace, and soon. By the way, this is some footage from my latest video, the first Patreon exclusive video that I have ever released, this one about Martian farming and how we can use the resources of the Red Planet and actually turn the poisonous aspects of its regolith into something productive for a future Martian colony. If you're interested in checking out this new content, well, all the details are in the description. Please like. Please subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space.